This is a discussion I have with my students. I'm a university professor, and this is a history of the health club and American identity crisis. Introduction, a philosophical awakening in the Iron Temple. Picture this, a dimly lit room filled with the rhythmic clang of iron plates, the scent of sweat lingering in the air, and the collective determination of individuals pushing their bodies to new limits. This is the modern day manifestation of the ancient Greek and Roman gymnasium, a sacred space where the mind and body converge, where physical and mental strength intertwine in a harmonious dance. But in this age of technological marvels where artificial intelligence will and infiltrate every facet of our lives, the mind-body concept has found an unexpected ally in the realm of fitness, smart gym. In the annals of history, the Greeks and Romans were renowned for their belief in the interconnectedness, it's a big word, of the mind and body. They understood that physical fitness was not merely a means of sculpting the exterior, but a path to cultivating inner strength and wisdom. Philosophers such as Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Seneca preach the virtues of balance, moderation, and the pursuit of eudaimonia, the ultimate flourishing of one's being. The gymnasium, with its emphasis on physical exercise, intellectual discourse, and the nurturing of the whole self, stood as a testament to this philosophy. Now, fast forward to the present day, where cutting edge technology has ushered in a new era of fitness, an era where ancient wisdom can meet the marvels of artificial intelligence. The smart gym, a concept born from the fusion of advanced sensors, data analytics, and virtual reality seeks to revolutionize the way we approach fitness and well-being. Within its walls, gym goers are no longer confined to mere sets and reps, but embark on a transformative journey guided by the virtual presence of ancient philosophers themselves or a coach of your choosing. Imagine walking into the gym, a sleek, futuristic space adorned with state-of-the-art equipment and being greeted by an AR-powered virtual avatar of Socrates or Seneca to stay with the theme ancient thing. As you step into a treadmill or lift weights, their digital visages come into life, urging you to delve deeper into your mind-body connection. The whisper words of wisdom, challenging your preconceived notions and inspiring you to push beyond your limits. Socrates, with his unwavering commitment to questioning, provokes your thoughts as you engage in a strenuous cardio session. He asks you to reflect on the nature of your goals. Do they align with your true desires or are they merely a societal construct? He encourages you to contemplate the significance of physical discipline in shaping your character, reminding you that true strength is cultivated from within. Seneca, the stoic sage, materializes beside you as you perform a grueling set of squats. He imparts his wisdom on the art of resilience and the power of the mind to overcome physical obstacles. He reminds you that pain is temporary. And by embracing discomfort, which we all forget, you forge a strength that transcends the physical realm. Through the convergence of ancient wisdom and cutting edge technology, the smart gym offers a transformative experience and an opportunity to rekindle the age old dialogue that we've lost between the mind and body to rediscover the profound interconnectedness that lies at the heart of our existence. It challenges our preconceptions, pushes us to question our motivations, and invites us to embark on a journey of self-discovery. As we delve into the fascinating history of the health club and explore the American identity crisis that surrounds it. It is essential to recognize the profound impact that the mind-body concept, revived through the aid of artificial intelligence, has had on the modern fitness landscape. The smart gym, with its virtual philosophers 
and coaches. And immersive experiences is a testament to our enduring quest for self-improvement, our unyielding desire to unlock the true potential that resides within each and every one of us. So, step into this Iron Temple where the ancient and the con modern converge. Let the virtual avatars of wisdom guide you on a path towards self-discovery and holistic well-being. And remember, the journey of the mind and body is not just about fitness. It is a transformative quest that transcends the confines of the gym, shaping who we are and who we aspire to be in the grand tapestry of our lives. The identity crisis, the paradox of American fitness from invention to inactivity. In this vast realm of American ingenuity and innovation, there exists a peculiar paradox surrounding health clubs and fitness. It is a tale of how a nation pioneered the concept of health clubs, investing time, resources, and remarkable energy into crafting a culture of physical fitness only to find itself grappling with an alarming irony. Americans, mostly, despite their invention and widespread availability of these fitness havens, are remarkably averse to their own utilization. Now we will unravel the layers of this perplex perplexing conundrum and explore the intricate dynamics that have fostered this paradoxical relationship between America and exercise. The roots of this tale extend deep into the annals of American history where the seeds of physical fitness were sown. It was in the early 20th century that visionaries set the stage for a revolution in health and fitness. Inspired by their zeal for vitality, they spearheaded a movement that emphasized the transform transformative power of exercise. Thus, the health club was born, an emblem of ambition an aspiration promising a pathway to vitality and longevity. Driven by an indomitable spirit, Americans quickly adopted this new ideology of fitness. Across the nation, gleaming gyms adorned the urban landscapes, inviting individuals partake, to partake, partake in transformative experience they had to offer. These spaces were meticulously designed, boasting state-of-the-art equipment, expert trainers, and a community of like-minded individuals all seeking the elixir of health. The culture of fitness took root, permeating American society and embedding itself deep within the national psyche. And yet, as fitness flourished and health clubs multiplied, a curious divergence emerged between the intention and the action the paradoxical relationship between America and exercise begins to unfold. Surveys reveal that while Americans professed their unwavering commitment to health, yes, health is good, the majority rarely visited the very establishments they had birth. An era of lethargy and complacency over the nation contrasting sharply with the dreams of vitality that had once flourished. To comprehend this paradox, we must delve into the intricacies of the American psyche. And a nation revered for its entrepreneurial spirit, time is a finite and precious resource. The relentless pursuit of success, the demands of a 24-7 economy, the incessant pressure to achieve leave little room for the dedication required to maintain a healthy lifestyle, right? The health club, once a symbol of hope and rejuvenation, now lies abandoned in the face of an endless torrent of obligations. Moreover, this divergence is magnified by the paradoxical nature of choice. America, a land of abundant options, has created a marketplace of fitness possibilities so vast that it overwhelms even the most well-intentioned. Admits an array of boutique studios, home gym regimens, virtual fitness platforms, the allure of convenience seduces Americans away from the very institutions they once idolized, the gym, now overshadowed by the allure of quick fixes, Zempic, and easy, easy solutions, struggles to recapture the attention of its own creators. 
But perhaps the most profound explanation lies within the American psyche's inherent skepticism. The land that birthed the health club is also one that possesses a deep-seated mistrust. Cynicism, a, per a pervasive cynicism takes root. Americans, ever cautious and skeptical, skeptical, become reluctant to embrace the notion that the health club is the panacea it once appears to be. As we navigate this intricate web of paradoxes, it becomes clear that the solution to America's fitness conundrum lies not in gimmicks or quick fixes, but in a profound shift in cultural norms. To bridge the gap between invention and inactivity, a reimagining of priorities is required, one that values well-being alongside achievement that prizes health as a fundamental building block of success rather than an afterthought. Only through a collective reckoning with this paradox can America rediscover the essence of its own creation. In the realm of health clubs, the nation must find a way to rekindle its passion and commitment, transforming them from mere artifacts of a bygone era into vibrant hubs of, revi of revitalization. For in understanding the paradox of American fitness, we unveil the untapped potential that lies dormant within a nation of innovators, potential that, if harnessed, could define the landscape and health and wellness for generations to come. To recapture the attention of its own creators. But perhaps the most profound explanation lies within the American psyche's inherent skepticism. The land that birthed the health club is also one that possesses a deep-seated mistrust. Cynicism, a, per a pervasive cynicism takes root. Americans, ever cautious and skeptical, skeptical, become reluctant to embrace the notion that the health club is the panacea it once appears to be. As we navigate this intricate web of paradoxes, it becomes clear that the solution to America's fitness conundrum lies not in gimmicks, or quick fixes, but in a profound shift in cultural norms. To bridge the gap between invention and inactivity, a reimagining of priorities is required, one that values well-being alongside achievement that prizes health as a fundamental building block of success rather than an afterthought. Only through a collective reckoning with this paradox can America rediscover the essence of its own creation. In the realm of health clubs, the nation must find a way to rekindle its passion and commitment, transforming them from mere artifacts of a bygone era into vibrant hubs of, revi of revitalization. For in understanding the paradox of American fitness, we unveil the untapped potential that lies dormant within a nation of innovators, potential that, if harnessed, could define the landscape and health and wellness for generations. To come. Chapter one, birth of the health club. In ancient Greece, they had what could be considered the early version of a health club, a, gym, a gymnasium, the, the uh, English word, was a public institution where young men received instruction in physical exercises. They also held lectures and discussions on philosophy, literature, and music. Also, the common Greek adjective uh, yimnos, yimnos, meaning naked, by the way of its related verb of yimnazo, if I'm saying that right, my Greek friends will correct me, whose meaning is to train naked. And if you've been to any gym or health club, you understand the literal foresight about how people walk around the locker room. To train naked. Gymnazo, gymnos, train naked. There was a time when ancient Greek philosophers and the battle-tested Romans started the mind-body concept to make a stronger republic. Think military republic of the time. We try to do it now, but it's called loving your body. It's a different mind-body, and that cannot be taught in 
exercise science because it involves having to move your body through the physical using an educated mind because the body is a vessel in which the mind can relate to the world, physically speaking. Okay, that's enough metaphysics for now. Let's move on. Let's think about what made these ancient civilizations so grand. War, philosophy, conflict, battles for territory. One country dominates another for political, religious, or economic gain. And how did they sustain this? Well, they built armies of men that would conquer the enemy. Unlike today's advancing military technology, these ancient civilizations required the physical demands that could produce the type of ancient warriors that could defeat other men. Think 300, but bigger scale. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, running, wrestling, horseback riding, sword play, and other required for military combat are a curricular component of physical education programs for men and some women during these times of war and peace. There will be consequences when a society defiantly ignores the need of exercise. Young men and women in an advanced world turn towards virtual reality, realities and avoid exercise and training, which are still needed in any modern society. Point. There are no more cultural religious barriers to sport and exercise. None that preclude any socioeconomic barriers anyway. Today, it's common to see open facilities, recreation centers where men, women, children are welcome to participate in sport and exercise in physical fitness. The same behaviors used to ensure the survival of individuals and their culture need to live on in these current situations. We need to continue these physical activities. The scale of this value to a society should, in time, permeate an entire generation, but not all skills are this sensational to people, of course. Otherwise, more people would be doing it, right? We always say that. In this era of social media, immediate communication, the most important exercise science information on the planet still hasn't reached everyone. Let us discuss the last time anyone talked to someone you know that is so unhealthy they went and unchanged their health. The United States is basically the birthplace of the modern health club. We invented the very concept of organized fitness, the commercial gym, group exercise classes, yet despite our pioneering efforts, the American people remain some of the most unhealthy in the world. Facts, obesity rates, chronic diseases, metabolic diseases continue to climb and things such as diabetes, heart disease are at epidemic levels, statistically speaking. So why, despite our best intentions, have we failed to translate our health club innovation into a healthier society? This is the question that I explore in this talk, A History of the Health Club, an American Identity Crisis. We will travel back in time to the early days of physical culture and fitness in America when men and women first began to explore the benefits of exercise, we will meet the pioneers of the health club industry and learn how their vision of a healthier America gave rise to a multi-billion dollar industry. But we will also examine the dark side of the health club phenomenon, the obsession with physical appearance, the commodification of fitness, and the challenges faced by those who do not fit the mold of the ideal body. Most importantly, we will explore the fundamental questions at the heart of the health club debate. Why are we so drawn to the idea of fitness and yet so resistant to its transformative power? How can we overcome the objections, both personal and societal, that stand in the way of a healthier, happier nation? Now join me on this talk as we journey through the history of the health club and examine the complex relationship between fitness, identity, and American culture. The United States has a curious relationship with the health club. On the one hand, we invented the modern gym, as you know it, as you see it, the classes, commercial industry. We embraced culture with a fervor unmatched by any other nation. And yet, despite these efforts, we remain one of the unhealthiest nations of the world. It's a paradox that has long fascinated me and others in our industry and academia. How is it possible that a nation so obsessed with fitness 
has failed so spectacularly to translate that, that obsession into actual health. We will delve into the roots of this paradox, exploring the history of physical culture in America and the rise of the health club industry. We will meet the pioneers of the fitness culture from the muscle men of the early 20th century to the founders of the modern health club. We will also delve into the complexities of this cultural phenomenon, examining the dark side of fitness culture and the many obstacles that stand in the way of a healthier America. The history of the health club is a story that spans centuries and continents. It is a tale of human beings striving for physical fitness and mental well-being of communities coming together to pursue a common goal. And it is a history that begins as so many histories do with the ancient Greeks and Romans. The Greeks and Romans valued physical fitness and athleticism above all else. They built sprawling gymnasia or gymnasia that served not only as places to exercise, but also as social and cultural centers. These gymnasia were the birthplace of organized sports, where athletes trained and competed in events that tested their strength, endurance, and agility. Think Olympics. It was in these ancient gymnasia that the seeds of the modern gym health club were sown. The Greeks and Romans recognized that physical fitness was essential to a healthy and productive life, and they built communal spaces that enabled individuals to pursue that goal altogether. But it wasn't until much later in the 19th century that the modern concept of these gymnasium began to take place. Like in 1983, uh, sorry, in 1838, the first public gymnasium in the United States was established in Boston, taking inspiration from the ancient gymnasium or gymnasia. This, this gymnasium was open to both men and women and offered a variety of equipment and activities such as weightlifting, wrestling, and fencing. You've seen the pictures, the old leather rings. Since then, the health club has continued to evolve, taking on new forms and adapting to changing cultural norms. But at its core, the health club remains a place where individuals come together to pursue the ancient ideal of physical fitness and mental well-being. So let's go on to the legacy of the modern world.